Today, a few considerations on St. John, the beloved disciple, who is the disciple who we consider two days after the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, of all the apostles, there are 12 apostles, and he is the beloved one. He is the one who put his head upon the heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Thomas put his hands into the side, but St. John put his head into the heart. So there are two great kinds of saints. The one who puts his head into the heart, as St. John did, and then St. Thomas who put his hands into the heart. And so today a consideration of St. John, the beloved disciple. And remember that when he was, he was the youngest of all the twelve apostles. He was 16 years old when he met our Lord Jesus Christ. He was 19 years old when Christ was crucified upon the cross. And he died after all the other apostles in an old age around the year 100 AD. All the other last apostles that died before him had died more than 20 or 30 years before him by martyrdom. He was the only apostle that was not shed, did not shed his blood for Christ and was not a martyr. And it said this apostle also had a special effect. He was the only apostle who got to live every moment from the crucifixion until the assumption with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he had the special duty of caring for her. And he was also the apostle who spoke in the name of all the church more than any other apostle concerning our duty. Because when our Lord Jesus Christ was on the cross, he said, Woman, behold thy son. He asked her to behold her son. And the one that was standing there before the cross was St. John, the beloved disciple. Woman, behold thy son. And when she beheld John, she did not behold only the priest. No, she beheld first the priest. And she did not behold only the disciples, the other apostles, but all mankind. Woman, behold thy son. He was a representative of all mankind. So that when the Blessed Virgin Mary looks down upon the earth and looks at any one of us, those are the farthest from God and those are the closest to God, she sees through him. So in a kind of a similar way, how the Blessed Virgin Mary is a mediatrix of all grace, and when God looks down to earth, he sees his mother and all those that are under her mantle. These are the ones who shall be saved. But what does she do? She looks upon St. John, the beloved disciple. And St. John only mentions his own name once in the Gospel of 21 chapters, he only mentions his own name once. And that is at the very, very end. Every time that St. John speaks of himself, he does not use his own name. He says, Peter and the one whom Christ loved were there. Peter and the one whom Christ loved, and, and also James, went to the top of the mountain. Peter and the one whom Christ loved ran to the tomb. And the one whom Christ loved. He simply said, the one whom Christ loved. And yet we know that our Lord Jesus Christ loved all 12 apostles. But there is one that he loved with the most sacred, perfect, and special love. And that is the most pure St. John. And he was young. Consider his character, his natural character. He was 16 years old when he met Christ. 19 when he died. The other apostles were already married. They were already living their lives. They were all grown men. And yet amongst the apostles, he was the most intelligent. He was the most savvy in the dealing with men. And he was a born leader. He had a very powerful character. So the apostles looked to him. Here is a 17-year-old boy, and a 30-year-old man asks him what to do. He had a bearing of power, a bearing of, of incredible demanding of respect. And he had a very hot temper. He had extremely strong personality. He was already the leader and builder of ships. He was the one in charge of the ship. They were, James was his older brother. But it was one of those cases where the older brother obeyed the younger. And the older brother followed the younger. And the younger brother was the one in charge. He was the one that ruled. And James was only allowed to come along because he was John's brother. And everyone knew it that way. So even in the natural realm, St. John had an incredible, unique, powerful character. 
And then our Lord Jesus Christ met this character. And what made him so powerful? There are many intelligent men, and there are many men that are savvy, know how to get around this world. St. John knew everybody. He was very well spoken. Remember, when the day of the crucifixion came, he took advantage of this. So when our Lord Jesus Christ was dying, he knew the guards. He knew the soldiers. He knew those in charge. And he got in past the guards and past the soldiers, and he also got St. Peter to come in as well. So that the other ten apostles were not able to get very close to Jesus Christ during the trials. They were all there. They all witnessed the trials, but they had to witness from a distance. They were out in the main crowd. But St. John and Peter were able to be right next to our Lord during the entirety of the crucifixion. Because St. John knew everyone. And when Jesus Christ was dying on the cross, he was the one that made sure that his mother got to that cross. He brought her to the cross. And he made sure that she was able to stand at the foot of the cross. And he stood there in such a way that no one would in any way get in the way of that woman. So there was something most incredible about St. John when we first meet him. And he has also he has an extremely powerful heart. And he has a great wisdom. And as a very young boy, and he's a natural leader of men. And he is a man who, if he took his ambitions, could go very, very far. But what happened? When St. John met our Lord Jesus Christ, he transformed all his ambitions. Remember, he was still very ambitious during the turn of three years. He fought with the other apostles. He wanted to be the head apostle. Remember when he asked his mother, he asked his mother, you go and talk to our Lord Jesus Christ, because I know he likes me better than the other 11. Right now, St. Peter is in charge. He's the head apostle. But I want you to go and speak to him and say, can you take my two sons, John and James, and put one on the right side, one on the left side, and let them be the leaders in your kingdom. So that's what he asked his mother to do. He was still very ambitious. And his mother came and said, can you take my two sons and put one on the right side and one on the left side to be the leaders of all the apostles? Right now, Peter is the apostle. Right now, Peter is the head apostle. But I want John to be the head apostle. And James, since he is his brother. Our Lord said, you don't know what you are asking. Can you put up with the pain that I'm going to put up with? Can you go into the war I'm going to go into? Can you fight as I fight? And John and James said, yes, we can. Yes, we will. And then our Lord said to him, you will. You shall. For as I shall pass to eternity by death, you shall pass also. Notice that our Lord Jesus Christ said of James and John that they would both die martyrs. But when you look at the history of St. James and St. John, St. James was the very first apostle to be martyred, and St. John was the only apostle who was not martyred. So skeptics might say, well look, he said, you too shall pass the same death that I'm going to pass. James is going to be cast off the temple, off the pinnacle of the temple and killed. And John, how did he die? He died of old age. He didn't die by blood. But our Lord said, you shall die as I die. As I am going to die, so you shall both die. But to whom is going to be on the right side, and who is going to be on the left side, it is already decided by the Father. So we learn from this that there are two martyrdoms. St. John's martyrdom St. James martyrdom, which is the normal bloody martyrdom, by which St. James shed his blood for Christ. But then there is the greater and higher martyrdom, which is the martyrdom of St. John the Apostle. The father apologists of the church, St. Augustine and others tell us, St. John did truly die the life of a martyr. Our Lord said he would die. You see, Jesus said he was going to die. He said he was going to die a martyr, but he didn't die a martyr. Well, yes, he did. He received the martyr's crown for two reasons. One, St. John receives a martyr's crown because he, because St. John received the martyr's crown, he received the martyr's crown because he was boiled in oil for Christ. It's just that the oil did not harm him. The angels protected him from the boiling of oil. He didn't experience even the slightest discomfort when they boiled him in oil when he was about 90 years old. 
He pulled him out of the oil. He was not harmed in any way. This also happened to many other martyrs. But then he was not put to death. However, he went to death. He was ready to die. And he was placed in the oil. Therefore, he receives a martyr's crown. And secondly, he is more importantly a martyr because he died of the martyrdom that the Blessed Virgin Mary died of. And that is the martyrdom of perfect love. There are many cases in history where a woman loves a man, and a man loves a woman, or a man loves his king, and died simply of love. There was one famous case in the time of, of, of Philip II, the king. And Philip II was raised by an elder, one of the uncles that raised him as a little child. And everyone betrayed Philip so many times during his life, but this man never told a single lie to Philip. And he trusted him with absolute no questions of any kind. Finally, when Philip was about 45 or 50 years old, and this man was in his 60s or 70s, he told a small lie. And for the very first time in his life, Philip caught the man in a lie. And he had never lied before to the king. But for some reason, he decided to lie that day, a small lie. And the king said to him, I cannot cause you any harm because you are my most trusted counselor. I cannot give you any punishment. However, because you have lied to me when I thought you were the one who could never lie, you go wherever you want. You do whatever you wish. You rule wherever you want my kingdom. You write the, the decree for me and it shall be fulfilled. I only have one demand that I never see your face again. His uncle or his near relative that went home and died. Died simply of a broken heart. And there are many cases of men that have died of a broken heart or died simply of love. St. Pius X, when he saw the suffering that would happen in the world because of World War I, when he saw how much death and tragedy and how many of his children and his flock would die, he died simply of a broken heart. St. Pius X died of a broken heart from seeing the pain that his children and our Holy Mother of the Church would suffer at World War I. St. John is an apostle of love, a true apostle of charity, the apostle of charity, and it was love that was the cause of his death. Hence, he is a true martyr of charity. Now, St. John, after the group, when our Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross. He died upon the cross, and he made that great gift, Woman, behold thy son. And then he, through St. John, he gave the command to all of us, what are we supposed to do in order to go to heaven? What are we supposed to do to conquer Satan? Son, behold thy mother. And no one can behold the mother as St. John. And when he beheld the mother, the heart of that woman, the most immaculate heart, entered inside of him, and he became the perfection of charity, the perfection of love. And he was the son of thunder who said to call down fire and brimstone from heaven. And he would have been great ambition and wanted to be the first on the side of our Lord Jesus Christ, to be the first in his kingdom, and wanted to have great power. Everything was transformed. So that now he only had the love of God. And he could only carry God wherever he went. That is the reason why when he was an old man in his 90s, and he had to write the gospel that is given unto his name. He wrote that gospel with the words that we say at the end of every Mass, or almost every Mass. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And all things were made through him, and without him was made nothing that has been made. Here we see that St. John is at the peak of the mystical life. What is a sun and a moon and a star without God? Nothing. That's what they're made of. So whoever sees a sun for what it really is, the sun that's high in the heavens, whoever sees a tree for what it really is, and sees it what it really, really is. What is it made out of? What makes it be tree? What makes it be sun? 
What makes it be stars? What makes it be sky? The word that said, let there be sun, let there be stars, let there be sky, let there be light. And he sees God everywhere. When he opens his eyes, this disciple of charity, he saw God in the stars. And outside of God, what else is there to see in stars? Nothing. He saw God in all things. Now he has to write a book, the fourth of the Gospels, to fill in some elements that are not there in the other Gospels, concerning especially the, the, the depth of the divine love and the depth of the divinity showing itself in everything that the true man, Jesus Christ, did. Because he's a true and real man. But every single thing that the true man, Jesus Christ, did was divine. Everything he did was of God, because he's also true God. And St. John shows God in every single movement, and every single word, and every single miracle and action that came from Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were made through him, and without him was made nothing that has been made. Now we come to the last verses of the Gospel. Actually, verses 13 and 14, I think it is, of the last gospel, we read in the Mass. And we see that St. John, all he did during those 70 or 80 years, between the time that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he himself died of love, all he did was behold the mother. And hence, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we saw his glory. The glory is the only begotten of God, the Son of God, with the only begotten of the Father. We saw His glory. That's all. Who are we who are supposed to be the saints of the church, the saints of every age? We are those that see the glory of God. That's all He did, was He saw the glory of God. He saw the glory of God in His death, life and death. He saw the glory of God in the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he saw the glory of God in all the things that happened from that moment until the very end. For instance, what is the last word we have recorded of St. John in the Gospel? He says three words. It's the Lord. These are the last words we have recorded of him in the Gospel. When St. John, when St. John and St. Peter were in that boat 15 days after the resurrection, and St. Peter was fishing, and St. John was fishing, and they had forgotten about Christ. They were bored because he had not appeared for a few days. They were not ready to be apostles. So St. Peter said, let's go fishing. We're fishermen. And they said, that's a good idea. And five of them went fishing. And they fished all night, and they caught nothing. And in the morning, they caught 153 fish. Exactly 153. They saw a stranger on the land, and even St. John did not recognize the stranger. None of them recognized the stranger. They didn't recognize, they had lived with him for three and a half years. He was the center of their life. He was standing on the shore, and they were in the boat, but only maybe 50, 60 feet away. They were very close to the shore. And they saw him, and could see him plainly, but they did not recognize him, including the disciple St. John. And they didn't recognize the familiar request. Did you go fishing last night? We did. We fished all night. But we caught nothing. Try letting your light not down on the right side. And they let it down on the right side. Not knowing that it was Christ that gave the command. And when they caught the fish, 153 of them, they pulled them in. And St. John was, St. Peter was amazed at the catch of the fish. But what about St. John? He did not see fish. He saw the Lord. Therefore he said to St. Peter, Peter, it's the Lord. Now these words have been spoken millions of times in the last 2,000 years. What happened when St. John spoke those words? He spoke the words, it's the Lord. And when he said those words, they entered into the heart of St. Peter. And Peter was forced to act. Peter jumped into the sea. Peter could not wait to be next to Christ because he heard the beloved disciples say, it's the Lord. And what is the duty of the priest of God? 
as he preaches the word of God down the last 2,000 years. He is supposed to point to the tabernacle. He is supposed to point to the crucifix. And he is supposed to say to all souls, it's the Lord. It's the Lord that's in the tabernacle. It's the Lord that's on the crucifix. It's the Lord that is everywhere. It's the Lord. Now this word has been said by so many priests and so many prophets down the last 2,000 years. And also by the prophets of the Old Testament who pointed to the Lord in the future. And yet, most of the time, these words have no power, they have no efficacy, and they drop dead. But when St. John said those words, it's the Lord. He transformed the whole world more than St. Paul did. St. Paul was the greatest of all the apostles. He went around the whole world and he wrote 14 epistles. And he is the apostle that converted the world. Well, how did it become possible? Because St. John simply stood at the foot of the cross. That's all he did, was stand there. He stood next to the Holy Mother. And when he was in that boat, he caught the fish, but he didn't go swimming. He didn't jump in the water. He gathered together the fish and he brought it to the shore. St. Peter needed time with Christ. He let St. Peter have his time with Christ. It would take too long for that boat to get to the shore and too long to pull in the 153 fish. So St. John, what did he do? He pulled in the 153 fish. He acted as a servant. He put them on the boat. He brought them to the shore. He brought some fish to be cooked and to be eaten. And they spoke to the Lord, and they were with him, and they had a meal. And it's the Lord. And the Gospel tells us that they were afraid to ask him who he was, or they knew who he was. And therefore, they only spoke. So the only mention about who he was came in the very first words of St. John. And at the end of that day, what happened? Our Lord Jesus Christ said to St. Peter, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Three times he asked a question about love. It all began because the disciple of love noticed and saw that it was the Lord. He saw the divine love in the 153 fish would stand for all the same. He saw the divine love in the, in, the, in the one that was standing on the shore. And hence he is the great disciple of charity. And it is also said in his ending days that people complained about St. John. When he was in his 90s and saying his mass and created to his servants, every single question they came to ask him, they said, what about my problems with my wife? What about my problems with my children? What about my problems with my husband? What about the problems with the Romans coming to kill us? What, what are we to do in this time of crisis? What about this? What about that? And St. John, at the end of his days, had only one response. Love God. Love God. Love God or your wife problems go away. Love God or your husband problems go away. Love God and your parent and children problems go away. Love God and the Romans will go away. And we notice also from the communion of the Mass that would normally be today, the Sunday within the octave. One day an angel came to St. Joseph. We must not forget these words. Remember, Joseph ran away with our Lord Jesus Christ. And he went to the land of Egypt and stayed there about seven years. And at the end of the seven years, an angel came and said only these words to Joseph. Joseph, it's time for you to go back to Nazareth now. You may leave Egypt and return home. Because every one of those that sought to kill the child, they are dead. Let us not forget that. There are many people in the year 2020, ready to become 2021, who want to kill the child. They are the wicked men that rule this world. They want the death of the child. They want the death of this church. They want the death of his faith. They desire deeply the death. But one day an angel will come and say, all those that wanted the death of Jesus Christ, they're dead. Like one priest preached a very short sermon. Mine's getting longer, but one priest a hundred years ago preached a very short sermon in Germany. Nietzsche said, God is dead. 
And they used to quote Nietzsche and said, God is dead, sign Nietzsche. And when Nietzsche died, a priest in Germany went to the pulpit and said, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. Nietzsche said, God is dead, sign Nietzsche. I announce today, Nietzsche is dead, sign God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. And so he went out. As the old Arab saying says, he who laughs last, laughs longest. Who shall get the last laugh? Who is still going to be standing when all those that saw Jesus Christ are dead? They shall all die first. They that saw the child are dead. They are physically dead. They are spiritually dead. They are burning in the fires of hell fires of darkness and not of light. They are dead in the memory of men. They are dead in the memory and the face of God. They are dead, 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 and forgotten forever. They that sought the child are dead. We must understand in the year 2020 that of the millions of men, wicked men throughout the world, that are seeking that Jesus Christ be dead, they're seeking that his death be inside of those that tried to that love him, they shall die, and they are dead. Notice about the great St. John the Apostle. He didn't travel like St. Paul. He didn't travel like St. Francis Xavier. He didn't do the invisible external great things that St. Peter did. All he did was know and love. These are the two things that make us human. We have bodies. But so do animals. But what makes us human is that we know and we love. And St. John is the apostle, the disciple, who simply knew and loved. Also know this concerning the battle against the devil. Satan is not only defeated in hell. Satan shall also be defeated upon this earth. Not only in hell. So the eleven apostles died saints and martyrs. But St. John did not die a martyr. It was not the will of God that he die a martyr. He was brought to martyrdom. They tried to kill him, but he did not die. So many cases of this throughout history. I remember one time in Australia, a young priest telling about the old Father Cummins, an old lady, who is going to bury you? This priest is old and dying right now. Who is going to bury you? He is a young priest in the number short. He's an old traditional priest. How are you going to be a very traditional? How is it going to happen? You live in the middle of nowhere, Spreaky Bay, in the middle of nowhere in Australia. How are you going to be married? That priest died before Father Cummings did. And God took care of the Catholic burial. So many think they will outlive God. Many of the, of the martyrs also, when they were about to be martyred, it was the persecutor that died and not the martyr. Sometimes it is God's will that we be martyred. It is not always His will. Sometimes it is His will that a judge that condemns us be judged. And in all cases, they shall receive a judgment. But not only in eternal hell and damnation, but also in this life. Sin is its own punishment, as goodness and virtue is its own reward. And we see St. John. Who can live a happier life than him? He was able to be the bishop of the Diocese of Ephesus. He was able to be with the Blessed Virgin Mary for the 15 years that she was after the crucifixion. He died peacefully in his bed. And he died simply of divine love. And he passed straight into heaven. And he is the beloved disciple. Now at the end of his gospel, St. Peter says, what about him? What do you want me to do, Lord? And see, our Lord says, follow me. What about him? What about John? And our Lord Jesus Christ said, what is it to thee? He will stay here till I come. He will stay here till I come. And then St. John says, because the Lord said this, many people say that the beloved disciple shall not die. He didn't say that I wasn't going to die, for I, John, am the beloved disciple. All he said was, 
What is it to thee, Peter? He shall stay until I come. And he explained no further. What was the cause of the death of St. John? One day, our Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven. He came down, but the fiery chariot came down and took up Elias into the heavens, or into the garden of paradise. Later, he will be taken into heaven. And then he came down to take St. John into heaven. Jesus Christ came for him. He physically came from heaven in his body, and he came down, and he took John. And then St. John died and went to heaven. He did not mean that he would not die, but that he would stay until Christ came. Now, this is true of all the saints. St. John stands for the charity of the saints. Every saint must have the divine love inside of him. And the day that we have perfected our work of love, the day we perfected our work of fulfilling our role as a saint, then we go to heaven. And if it's not the day, we shall not go. <coughs> Remember our Lord Jesus Christ. They tried to kill him at least five times before Good Friday. But it was not his time. Therefore he was not touched and he was not harmed. And so it shall be with us. If they come after us and it's not our time, they're not going to catch us. It is all that matters the day that Christ comes. Let us prepare for the day that he's going to come to judge us. The day that he's going to come and bring us to the kingdom of heaven. That's the day that matters. And let us learn what it means to love God by imitating the great St. John the Apostle, the great warrior, the great lover of God, who wisely stood the side of, Jesus, of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, took her into his home, and simply watched her. And from that came all the love that is in our church, and all charity comes through that beloved Apostle. Christ looks at Mary, and Mary looks at St. John, and in those three is all happiness and all peace. And with those three, we can never worry and never be disturbed, and we'll be ready for the kingdom of heaven. Closing up as you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.